Hello everybody and welcome to my new video. In this video I am going to show you how to use a manual burr grinder. To start with this is how the burr grinder comes in full. So basically it comes in two parts. It has a glass bottom which is used for collecting all the coffee as it's grinding and then it also has the top part which is all the mechanics of the grinder. So firstly to begin with we have to take it apart. So to start with we have to remove the cap or in technical terms it's called the called the crank nut. Then we have the crank itself which is the bit that you use to turn it around. A bit obvious really. Uh, then you have the steel cap which you remove, so not steel cap, silicone cap, cap sorry. Uh, this is a silicone cap which is used to stop all the coffee beans from flying out as you're grinding. Uh, then you have um, the adjustment lock, so this stops the adjustment ring from moving about when you're grinding, so we'll take that out. Then we have uh, the adjustment ring, we're going to take that all the way off. And then what's left are the two burrs. So the burrs come in two two parts. So in this bit, this is the inner burr, right? And this is the burr, the other burr, which can come loose. So basically, they rub together. Sorry, let me put it back in. These two rub together and it turns like that to allow the coffee beans to go through. So obviously that's way too loose, normally it would be more like that. So that's just how close or apart these are determines how coarse or fine you want your coffee beans to be. So, so basically what you do now to put it together, you first want to put the adjustment ring on. And this is the most important bit. So yeah, this. So you put it, you put it on top like that, and if you look very carefully, it comes with both a completely flat bit and a slightly rounded bit on the other side. So you want the flat bit to be the bit that goes on top, directly on top of the uh, of the thing. Um, I don't know what you call it. So you, you put the cur have the curved bit above the flat bit at the bottom. So we screw that on all the way until you can get it as tight as you want. But do not over tighten it because it will be hard to untighten again. So then you can see that you, you probably see on this bit here it's mostly rounded but there is a flat bit as well. The flat bit which is now facing the camera is must be in line with one of the notches so when we're on the tightest notch you can see it's not quite aligned so we have to undo it a bit to get to the to notch, ze notch zero sorry so this is the tightest you want it so to so at the moment it's really tight, so basically you want to untighten it enough times until you get the desired coarseness. So this obviously is too tight to be able to grind any beans. So we're going to undo it to the first notch and then to the second notch. Now this second notch will make a very fine coffee. Um, not quite espresso fine, but fine enough that it'll be quite strong. And basically this is equivalent to an aeropress. Okay, let's undo it one more time. So we're now on the third notch. That is equivalent to a drip cone. I personally do not use one, but I genuinely, but however, I do use this setting typically when I'm making my coffee. And I just use a normal coffee cafetiere to do this. So I'd say three is quite good if you want pretty strong coffee. Um, 
So let's do it again. So we're on notch four now, and then notch five. So notch five is equivalent to a metal, fil metal filter uh, brewing method. Then undo it to six, and then undo it to notch seven. And that is equivalent to a French press. Now obviously, if you, if you did this with a normal cafetiera, it would be pretty weak. So I wouldn't recommend having it on setting seven if you want to brew it normally. So once this is done, uh, you then have to put everything back on. So we put the adjustment lock back on. So it keeps, uh, <laughs> it keeps the whole adjustment ring from moving when you're grinding. Then you um, must put the crank on. Obviously the handle must go upwards not rocket science. Then you um, put the the cap on last, or technically the crank nut, posh in it. Very posh, <laughs> very posh. So you get that back, back on, like that. Uh, and then you put the glass bottom on the bottom. And then we're ready to put the coffee beans in. Notice I have not put the silicon cup on yet. There's no point putting it on yet until the coffee beans are in. So let's get ready to start grinding the coffee beans. So yeah, we've got some coffee beans. Um, this is one and a half tea tablespoons. Um, so basically, when I when I say a tablespoon, I mean yeah, just a no normal one, just enough so that the coffee beans can fit onto it. If it if you try and heap it too much, some will fall off. So it's what can fit on the spoon, which in this tutorial is classed as a tablespoon. So we want one and a half of these, and we're going to add it to, to the grinder. Okay, I've already measured it out, so we don't have to bother going into the packets. So we, let's get the lid back on. So now we are going to begin grinding. Um, let me get into let me get into um, the picture. I'll, I'll sit down. Yeah, I'm going to sit down. Let's begin. So this will take about 150 turns. Okay. And yes, I forgot to mention that um, the amount of water you want for one and a half tablespoons of coffee you want two of these mugs so this is the mug I've, I've used to measure it all out I don't normally measure it out so I did that just to help you so you know how much water to put in so let's continue so right notice that the sound of the grinding has changed. That roughness is gone and it's now smooth. That means it's all done. Right, next it's time to pour the coffee. So I pour the water into the coffee. So when I, when I mean that, um, I mean, uh, I mean, we got to get the coffee into um, the cafetiere. Uh, this is a this is a double ward metal one, so it will keep your coffee quite hot. So get we'll get that in like that, and we're going to get the water in. So another tip: when you heat the water for your coffee, always make sure that it's not at all boiling. So if it's boiling, it will make the coffee more bitter. Not everyone knows this, but that's the secret of making it taste a bit better. So now we're going to let it brew. So we want to, um, I think I have filled it up a little bit too much, but oh dear, oh dear, <laughs> I've made a stupid mistake. I overestimated. So we'll get this plunger in. Welcome back. Yes, um, you probably wonder why I'm in different clothes. Um, I've just been out for a walk in the pouring rain and my trousers are absolutely soaking. So I've just got back and I'm looking forward to a nice cup of coffee now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get on and pour it. So push the lid, not lid, 
I don't know what you call it, the plunger. Yeah, you put the plunger down and then yeah, we just pour it. <laughs> it's not pouring, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, always make sure that, that I'm sure I'll lift it be easy to show. Always make sure the bit with the little gap is always facing the spout as well when you pour it. There we are, pour, it, pour more easily now. <laughs> There we are. I'm going to have my coffee now and yep, I have it black. Um, I don't hate milky coffee but I just prefer it to taste like coffee so mm. yeah, it tastes pretty good. Maybe it could be a little bit stronger I guess. <sighs> I think I didn't put enough coffee beans in. Well, I did but not quite enough. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video um, please stick around, please subscribe to my channel, I will be putting another coffee, uh, sorry another video related to this up very shortly, so I look forward to seeing you then, and goodbye.